I'm Rachel with Frasa, and today I'm going to talk about what's arguably the most time intensive part of creating a new assistant, uh, telling it what to do. And the ways that you do this are by providing training data and rules. We're going to start by talking about what training data is for a Raza assistant, and then providing information about how conversation should go using stories and rules, and finally providing uh, examples of how people tend to say things using intents. So first off, what is data in the context of a Raza project? Um, there are a couple different types of data that you would use. So the first you probably don't have to collect, and this is any data that is being used to uh, create pre-trained models that you're using as part of your NLP, sorry, NLU pipeline. So anything like a language model, a word embedding, if you're using any sort of pre-trained hugging face model, uh, those will all be trained on some text data, and you don't really have to worry about it, but it will affect your final output, and that's something to know about. Um, user generated text is another major source of data. So this is something like, what are all the different ways that people have said hello to your assistant and how can you map those onto a single intent category? Uh, and also patterns of conversation, right? So if uh, a uh, person says hello to your assistant, what should your assistant say next? What patterns of conversation generally tend to flow? So examples of places where you could get data uh, would be customer support logs. So if you have existing data from customer interactions and also you have permission to use those, that's an example. And the number one place, the absolute gold standard for data uh, for continuing to improve or build your assistant would be user conversations with that assistant. So this is always your best choice. If you can use actual user data, please do use actual user data. Um, you can think about it in terms of, you know, statistics. If you have a population you're trying to model and you might uh, sample some data from that population, or maybe you don't have access to the population you're trying to model and you're trying to uh, create a similar sample from a different population, you have access to the data of people actually interacting with your model and that's what you're trying to model. You're trying to model the sorts of things that people say to your, when they talk to your assistant and help to be able to actually uh, handle those interactions well. So as much as possible, use data from people actually using your assistant as soon as you can in your development process and keep using it uh, during your conversation-driven development, you know, whole process improving your assistant. With that in mind, what does this actually look like? Uh, so the types of data that you need to help you decide how conversations go are called stories. We'll talk about those. Um, and you can also use rules with a Raza assistant. And this can be very helpful uh, when you have a very compact way of expressing a very short number of turns uh, and you just want to make sure they always go the same way. Uh, and then how do users say things? So these are you know, categories into which you can group user text, uh, user utterances, and those are called intents. We'll talk about those in a sec. So what are stories? Stories are training data to teach your assistant what it should do next. So if your assistant is having a conversation and you have a story that follows the exact pattern that you're seeing, which often happens, the pattern that's told in the story will be used by the assistant using something called a memoization policy. If, however, you have a uh, pattern of conversation and the user says something that the assistant hasn't seen before, it will look at all of those stories using something called the TED policy, if you're using our default, uh, our default guidelines, to guess what the most likely thing is to say next. And if it's not sure enough, if the confidence isn't above some threshold that you've set, then it will uh, go down and do something called a fallback. So uh, stories are training data for the machine learning part, but also they're just templates. And if your users are sticking with a template, you'll stay with the template. How do you get these patterns? Um, if you already have conversational pattern, start with the patterns that you see there. So if you have conversations that you're trying to model, model those conversations. If you don't, which I think is very common, particularly if you're prototyping, the easiest way to do it is to use interactive learning. So we have a uh, command line interface tool to do interactive learning where you pretend to be both the assistant and the user and have conversations back and forth and save those patterns. Um, and that is also in Raza X Community Edition. And start with the most common flows. Start with the conversation you want people to have with your assistant every time. And then add flows where that doesn't happen, right? Where something, um, you know, causes that not to occur. Uh, and then once you have your, your happy path, your common flows, and also a couple of um, things that you think are probably likely to, to happen in addition to that, um, as soon as you can, add more user data from actual conversations. 
what does this look like? So in your browser project, by default, you will have a folder called data. And in that folder, you will have a, a file called stories.yaml where you have the paths. So here, um, story, story, happy path, that's the name of the story. Happy path could be any type of descriptive name that you would like. Uh, and then you have the pattern of the conversation. So the intents are things that the user say that your machine learning model has detected. So the user has said something, the uh, machine learning model has detected, okay, they're greeting. Actions are things that your assistants do. Actions that begin with utter are things that are said to the user. So here, uh, okay, the user said hi, the assistant says, okay, I should greet back and says greet. Uh, and then the user says, you know, I'm feeling good, something that the assistant is recognizing as them having a great mood, uh, and then you uh, respond with a specific utterance. Uh, you can also have or statements in your stories. So for example, if you have uh, a, a flow where someone is asked if they want to sign up for something, uh, if they say thanks, yeah, or yes, uh, here, so the intent affirm or the intent thanks, either of those things will then trigger that next action, action sign up newsletter. You can also have checkpoints. So in this example here, you can see that uh, the user says hi, the assistant says hi, uh, the user says bye, the assistant says bye, and at this point we have a checkpoint uh, called ask underscore feedback. And you can use that checkpoint to start new stories. So here, uh, if you ask for feedback uh, and the, uh, the, the user provides some feedback using this inform intent, then the assistant says, thank you, and asks us if there's anything else. If the, um, the assistant asks for feedback and the user says, no, I don't want to give any feedback, uh, then the assistant says, no problem, and then asks if there's anything else. Rules are a way to describe short pieces of conversation that always go the same way. So stories are for longer chunks of conversation and for your machine learning to learn from. Rules are uh, ways to handle small chunks of conversation where you don't really need any machine learning, you know what should happen, and it's always going to happen the same way. So an example here would be uh, if the user says greet, says something that is identified as a greeting, the assistant always greets, and that's the end of that section that's being ruled by a rule. And your rules, by default, go in your browser project in the same data folder as your stories in a file called rules.yaml. Uh, and we'll talk about rules in more depth in the future. For now, just know if there's a two-turn conversation, you always want it to go the same way. Rules are a good way to do that. So those are the ways that you can help your assistant uh, know the order to have conversations in. A couple things to keep in mind. So use actual user conversations as stories. If you're in Raza X, there's a really simple way to do that. When you're going through and looking at your conversations, you can just save it as a story and it'll all be handled. Do have small stories that aren't full conversations. So you can have just little snippets of a story. Uh, they don't all have to be full interactions with your assistant from top to bottom. Um, and those will be recombined during training for your assistant to learn from. Uh, if you have a one-off interaction, use a rule for that. Um, so something like checking an account balance, um, asking, hey, are you a bot? Uh, those can be handled by rules pretty well. I would avoid using rules for really complex multi-turn interactions. Um, if you do that a lot, you end up with a basically a very complex state machine, a very like convoluted tree diagram, and that can work okay for simple conversations, but especially if you're looking to extend your assistant in the future uh, and you're working on a project with multiple other people, um, it gets really rough to maintain really quickly. Or statements and checkpointing, use them sparingly. Uh, I would try to avoid having too many checkpoints in your project. Um, it'll, it just makes things very complex to, to keep track of. Um, don't feel that you have to write out every possible conversational flow. Uh, the reason that we use a machine learning policy in addition to the memoization policy and the fallback policy is to help you capture those edge cases so that you don't need to um, provide complete examples of everything a user might wanna do. Um, and as much as possible, user testing immediately, as soon as possible. Get your assistant in front of actual users, see what they do, uh, and then change your assistant so that it works better for, for the folks that are actually needing to use it. Now let's talk about intents. So intents are classes for multi-class classification, where uh, for each piece of input data, it will be assigned into one of the classes. So uh, if you are not using end-to-end -end learning, 
all of the things that your user can do, can say to the assistant, will be captured by a specific intent and you will provide the intents. And the training data for these are examples of ways to say things so that your uh, assistant can recognize them in the future. So in this example, uh, the intent is greet small talk. So just, you know, saying what's up, howdy. Uh, and the examples here are things that the user might say to the assistant. So hi, hello, howdy, hey, sup, how's it going, and what's up? If you have user data, so if you have, you know, uh, form questions maybe, or interactions that people have had in a conversational setting previously, uh, I would recommend using what's called a modified content analysis. This is uh, a method from qualitative research. Uh, and basically you just go through your data or a sample of your data uh, by hand and look at each data point and give it a label. If there isn't an existing label, create a new one. Um, and then at given intervals, so maybe like once an hour or you know every hundred data points, go through your groups and recombine them as necessary. And I would start with two to three passes through your whole data set if it's not that big or sample of your data set if it's quite large. Could you automate intent discovery and classification um, for designing the original intents? Maybe, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so if you're using some sort of unsupervised method to do text clustering, for example, there's no guarantee that the clusters will actually represent things that users actually want to do. Um, and you may be missing important types of things that you expect users to say to your, your, your assistant that they haven't said in the training data. So um, I wouldn't completely automate this process. Uh, if you have a lot of familiarity with unsupervised text classification methods, uh, perhaps the, you can apply that knowledge here. If you don't have data, start with the most common intent. So the thing that most people are going to want to say to your assistant. Um, and if you have spent a lot of time looking at conversational data and particularly, you know, chatbot logs, you will notice that uh, most people want to do a really small number of things. So um, there's not sort of a uniform distribution across the different intents you'll see you'll see a couple that are extremely common and then a pretty quick decay. So start with those intents that are super common, the things that people are probably going to, going to want to do. Um, you've already written your happy path story, so make sure you have lots of examples of all the intents in your happy path, for example. Um, and if you are, you know, building um, something for an institution, use the experts in that institution. So if you're building, you know, something to help your customer support staff, ask your customer support staff. They're, you know, very knowledgeable professionals. They're going to know what people usually want to do. Um, start with your smallest possible number of intents that cover your core use case. Um, a pretty common pattern is uh, to sit down, start coming up with intents, and you're like, oh, people might want to do this, people might want to do this, people might want to do this. Uh, but as I mentioned, there's a really long tail there, and if you spend a lot of time trying to imagine what might possibly be in the long tail, you're going to give yourself a headache and you're going to end up with a pretty intractable machine learning problem. So I would avoid against it. Uh, and everything that something somebody might want to say to your, your assistant that you can't currently handle. So if you have, uh, for example, an assistant that checks a bank balance but can't transfer money, you're like, people are probably going to want to transfer money. Put that in an out of scope intent uh, so that your assistant can identify, oh, that's something that somebody's asking to do. I can't do that. Uh, I've detected this intent. I'm going to respond in a certain way, perhaps with a rule. Uh, and additional intents should come from user data. Users will always surprise you. It's one of it's one of the delights of working in this space. You'll never be able to predict all the things that uh, someone will say to your assistant. So um, use what they're actually saying to identify. Okay, people tend to ask for this thing. I don't have a way to identify that. I should probably add that. Why am I <laughs> really harping on having fewer intents? Um, so in an older style of conversational design, you used to need to really sit down or you were encouraged to sit down and have an intent for every single thing your user might want to do. That's really not necessary with a machine learning approach. Um, so if you're using a Ross assistant and you're following conversation driven development, um, only start with the most popular and important intents and then add as you need to, if you need to. Like I said, most people are going to want to do a smaller number of things, so making sure you can handle those really common use cases and have a way to fail out, maybe pass people over to uh, a human rather than continuing with the assistant if they're really not getting what they need, um, can get you really far and can save everybody a lot of time. 
I know I'm talking about this a lot, but it is very important and it's very common for folks to start with way too many intents. Their system takes so long to train, it's really hard to use, um, and it's very hard to maintain. So um, from, you know, just like a purely practical standpoint of working on the assistant, the more intense you have, the more training data you need because you're adding more classes to a multi-class classification problem. Uh, the more maintenance it is, the more documentation you need to write, what do each of these intents mean? Um, and it's harder to annotate, right? So if I have three intents, it's pretty quickly for me to look at a piece of text and decide whether it just fits in one of those three. If I have 300, that's a much harder question and it's gonna take me longer. Um, and also just from a machine learning standpoint, uh, transformer classifiers scale linearly with a number of classes. So the fewer classes, the better. Uh, and if you are finding that you have a lot of intents and you're using them to save pieces of information, like if someone's trying to buy something, you have a different intent for everything they might want to buy, um, you should probably use entities instead because that will make the problem easier. And entity extraction is often, it's a simpler task and it's often much faster. Paring down intents. You're like, I might have too many intents, Rachel. Perfectly fine. We've all been there. We've all built that uh, assistant with way too many intents. Um, in this example, don't use an intent as a way to store information. Um, do that using slots. Slots are your, your bot's memory. They help your assistant carry pieces of information throughout the conversation. Um, and if you're noticing a lot of tokens that overlap between two intents, right? So in this example, um, booking a train ticket and booking a plane ticket, you might notice ticket happens a lot, ride happens a lot, uh, booking happens a lot in those two intents. Um, that's also a piece of evidence that, you know, okay, maybe those intents should be combined. So in this example, we've got booking train and booking plane, and we have readjusted it to make booking. So that's a single intent. It's a thing a person wants to do. Uh, and then picking out train tickets or rail tickets as uh, specific types of entities. Training data for the intent. If you have user-generated data, that's always number one. I know I keep harping on this, but trust me, it'll make your assistant so much better and your life easier. Um, so as much as possible, avoid synthetic training data, um, particularly with something like a, like a chatbot, chatbot interaction. It tends to do very unhuman-like things pretty quickly. Um, each utterance should unambiguously match to a single intent. Um, so if I have, you know, something a user is saying to an assistant, I should be able to immediately be like, okay, that's definitely this intent. There's no way it could be any of these other intents. Um, if an utterance is ambiguous, so it might you know, fall within one of multiple intents, uh, in that case, use end-to-end -end learning instead. So in Raza, end-to-end, -end, it's new in 2.x, um, is where you use the raw text of the user utterance rather than the uh, intent classification that you've detected. So something like good day or ciao or aloha, something that could be either hello or goodbye would go in end to end rather than something like hi there or hi or hola or what's up, which could go in only greeting. So here's an example of what end-to-end -end looks like. Um, in your stories, instead of having an intent for a turn when a user says something, you instead have user and then the raw text of what they said. So here the user said ciao, but ciao could also mean goodbye. So we've covered quite a lot. We've talked about uh, what training data is for a Rasa assistant. We've talked about stories and rules, ways to help your assistant know what to do next. And uh, we've also talked a lot about intents. So where to start if you do have data, where to start if you don't have data. Um, and I know that this is a lot of information um, and I want to prepare you. This is going to take a while. This is probably the most time consuming part of building any assistant is um, figuring out the training data, figuring out the structure of your intents and your stories, uh, but it'll be worth it when your assistant works and your users are delighted. All right, I hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing what you build and we'll see you next time.